coming out during Forward Fest to see One Million Cups. Um, woo, I like that. There is coffee and cake over here. For those of you who missed it, one of our organizers who just had to step out, Sarah Netti, um, is getting married to one of our friends at Redox, Nico Skivoski, this Friday. So we brought in some cake to celebrate. So help yourself. Um, and during the presentation, feel free to get up and, and get more. Um, it's a pretty casual environment here. So we're gonna have um, a couple things this morning. First, um, we're gonna do some quick introductions. We like to pass the mic around the room and see who's in attendance. There might be somebody that you wanna meet. We also um, are gonna have Emily Baxter give a couple minute update on um, her event tonight called We Are All Criminals. It'll be taking place right here. You might have seen the banners or been able to walk through them. And then we'll have Wes presenting about Fetch Rewards. And for those of you, this is your first time at One Million Cups, you're gonna hear the presenter speak. And then we're gonna leave about 15 minutes for the audience to ask Q&A. So we really want you to speak up, poke holes in Wes's presentation, um, ask him all the tough stuff, I'm sure he can handle it. And then um, he'll ask um, a question of you, the community, of how you might be able to help him um, and fetch rewards. So we also wanna real quick thank our sponsors. We have Field 59 doing a live recording and also a videotaping of the presentation, which will be available on our website. We also thank Nordic Consulting for providing the coffee. Um, we're excited to have the Wisconsin Technology Council sponsoring it next month, so you might be seeing some more of those folks here. So to kick us off, I'm Rachel Neal. Um, I work at Nord <laughs> Thank you. I work at Nordic Consulting, and then I'm also one of the organizers of One Million Cups Madison. I'm going to skip you. All right, I'm Caleb Faust. Oh, is this on? It is. All right, okay. I'm Caleb Faust. I'm a pro gripper, entrepreneur, and commodore of the Hofer Sailing Fleet out on Lake Mendota. Hi, uh, Mike Walsh. Um, I'm currently building a platform to uh, help people and businesses create, find, and share events. Um, my name is Greg. I'm the executive director at 100 State. Molly Siegel. I work for a business intelligence um, consulting startup called Talavant here in Madison. Hi, my name is Varun Pargava. I work for Retail Next, and we're an in-store analytics platform. And I'm William Hakizimana. I am the CTO of Export Abroad. I'm Megan O'Rear. I work at Nordic. I'm also an organizer of One Million Cups, and I've been really involved at 100 State. Good morning. My name is Craig Kettleson. I'm Enterprise Development Director at the Madison Region Economic Partnership. It's the eight-county economic development organization that serves Dane and the surrounding seven Reagan counties. Hi, my name is Nicole Justa, and I am also in economic development for Northern Wisconsin. I'm Drew Corson. I'm an attorney at Niner Boucher. I am Ian. I'm a junior at the UW, and I'm part of an organization called ISEC that brings the world together through cultural exchange. Hi, I'm Steve, uh, co-founder of 32 Auctions, which is a platform for hosting and managing silent auction fundraisers. I'm Amy Clymer of Clymer Consulting, and I work with teams and organizations to help them be more innovative. Uh, I'm Monty Schmidt. I'm the original founder of Sonic Foundry. Now I do uh, mentoring, consulting, and angel investing. My name is Bram Dahlmans. I'm the director of the Wisconsin Angel Network. My name is Maurice Cheeks. I'm the director of the Wisconsin Innovation Network. My name is Claudia Seidenberg, and I handle operations at 100 State. Hi, I'm Emily Baxter, and I'm with the We Are All Criminals Project. Renee Moe with United Way. Our job is to collaboratively unite the community to change people's lives and get measurable results. <laughs> My name is Christine Ash, and I'm with Park Bank, uh, Community Bank on the Square. I'm, I'm Mark Hoover. Um, I'm the executive director of uh, Snow Leopard Trading, a wealth management company, and uh, also uh, Hoover Family Foundation that's concentrating on uh, reform of the criminal justice system. I'm Dan Hoover. Uh, work with Blue Maple Property Management and Development. Now, Emily, do you want to come up and say a few words about the event tonight? Uh, 
Uh, so the event will take place next door uh, at 5 o'clock tonight. I hope that you're all able to come. I'll be talking about my project called We Are All Criminals. Uh, we Are All Criminals is uh, yet another way to examine the true and disparate impact of our criminal and juvenile justice systems on poor communities, communities of color, and American Indians throughout the United States. Uh, in brief, I interview people who have gotten away with crimes. Together we look at how their lives would have been different had they been caught by looking at state statutes and broader social stigma that likely would have prevented them from living the lives they now enjoy. I then juxtapose those stories with stories of former clients of mine. I'm a former public defender. Uh, and we look at how people who engaged in essentially the same behavior, uh, their lives have diverged wildly. Uh, and through that, it's, uh, it's a look at how very different our system is. And while, is that me? Yeah. What is it? Okay, <laughs> I'll just freeze. <laughs> uh, while how only one in... <laughs> I'm, I'm used to freezing, uh, especially after some uh, presentations. I drive 10 and 2 on the way out. Okay. Um, while only, only one in four of us, a quarter of the U.S. population, in fact it might be much more than that, has a criminal record, I posit that all of us, four out of four of us, have committed crimes. Uh, and yet, three out of four of us, 75% of us, have had the luxury to forget those. The luxury to reinvent ourselves, to be introduced as fellows rather than as felons. So, I'll talk about all of that and more tonight, and I hope that you're able to come. Thank you so much, Emily. All right, well, I think I'm going to turn it over to you. Right oh, you're right. I'm kind of waving out my shirt, but I'm good to go. Awesome, that sounds great. Looking forward to that, that's so cool. Um, so everyone, I'm Wes Schroll. I'm with Fetch Rewards. Um, I was the founder and CEO of the company. Um, excited to tell you guys a little bit more about what we actually do over at Fetch Rewards. Our, we're actually right there in the Churchill building, uh, looking to move into that building right there that's been sitting empty for 15 years. So hopefully in the future, we'll be able to look out the window and see each other. Um, but what I wanted to start today by walking everyone through was actually a retail presentation that we give. So this is going to be through the lens of what a retailer sees from us. Um, it's just a good starting point to go from and it will also just show we have a three-sided platform. We have different pitches depending on who we're talking to on that side. Um, and then I really wanna make sure that I leave plenty of time for questions and answers. And I'm gonna jump right into where we're at today, not how we got there. So I'm assuming some people will wanna ask more questions about that beginning side. So I want to start by talking a little bit more, and Metro is actually just one of the chains that we're working with right now, so this comes from us actually presenting it to them. So when we typically start by talking about Fetch Rewards as a company, we look at the other players that are in the technology space who are fundamentally disrupting the industries that they come from. They're traditional industries that have been around for decades upon decades, and all of a sudden, thanks to the piece of technology that everyone carries around in their pocket, they've been completely disrupted. Go talk to a taxi cab driver in New York, they'll be the first one to tell you that this is something that is prevalent and happening and I think is something that's great. However, when you take a look at the grocery industry, an industry that very similar to the taxi one has been uh, stagnant for the last hundred years, um, there's only a couple companies really looking to tackle that space right now. Some of the ones in that space are Instacart, there's Shipped, there's Curbside, there's a number of these different companies out there, all with valuations well into the hundreds of millions of dollars and billions even in the case of Instacart. However, they're looking at tackling the component of the market that's 3%, which is those are the people who are actually actively doing delivery or curbside pickup across the US right now. What we were amazed at is when you look at the entire grocery industry, the in-store experience over the past 50 years has fundamentally not changed whatsoever. There's no real way for you to be able to utilize the technology that a customer has in their pocket to be able to really give the customer more information as they go throughout the store, better savings, time savings, uh, a number of those different factors. And that's really why we started Fetch. From a customer's perspective, we want to go after the 97% of people who are still actively shopping in the actual stores. Then have a couple of quotes for the retailers that we're targeting and going after are the ones who have already identified this as a major flaw. Um, they're telling us that this is something on their roadmap, however, there's no technology company out there that can deliver it to them for a price point that they can actually manage to pay. Even a chain that's this large, which is actually up in Canada, 
they still have not been able to find a solution that's able to go in there, work with their different point of sale systems, and be able to integrate a technology to allow customers to go through the store, scan their items, bag them as they go, and be able to fly right through checkout. So that's the type of people that we're going after, and we're really showing them that imagine what it would be like if your customers got to choose your store over any of their competitors because your store offered a way for them to be able to keep track of their running total, earn different forms of deals, discounts, coupons, all the way out throughout their grocery shopping experience when they're actually holding products in their hand, delivering targeted messages. Um, and from their perspective, being able to reach out and communicate to their customers while they're actually in-store grocery shopping. So that's really the vision that we show them. If you take a look at the industry as a whole, we uh, there's been a lot of research around it. This is a white paper that we did not do, um, but it was taking a look at what the industry looks like as a whole across the US and what different types of customers there are out there. They funnel them into four main buckets with that being convenience, value, quality, and experience shoppers. And those are all different forms of shoppers who are looking for different things while they're in the grocery store. And I think the titles sum up who they are. Through the Fetch platform, we try to target and allow customers to be able to engage no matter what area, what, which one of those buckets they actually come from. So if you take a look at the actual product, it's a completely free mobile application for anyone to use on iOS or Android at any of the stores that we've partnered with. It will allow them to go through the store. They'll be able to scan the barcodes of any items that they're wanting to buy. Every time they scan a product, it's going to keep a running total for them. It will look to see if there's any coupons or deals out there available to them. If there are, it will automatically let the customer know so they don't have to go worry about, was there something online? Is this the best deal? We can guarantee you you're going to get the best deal while using this. On top of that, those are just some of the you know, coupons on the home screen that you can even scroll through them. We have a lot of people who actually plan their trips prior to going because they're looking at that. And then the other thing our stores do is they actually reward our customers with fetch points on every product they buy. So every time you scan a product, this customer just earned 50 points. Basically, 1,000 points equals a dollar. You get 1% back on every product, bare minimum. Some of our brands will then come on top of that and sponsor certain products or categories to be multiples that week or that day, uh, really being able to enhance the amount of points that these customers can earn. But unlike your traditional loyalty programs, which are focused on driving loyalty after the fact when customers are checking out and you swiping a card, you've already lost the customer by that point. There's no real loyalty you can drive to them at that point. We're all about driving loyalty every step along the way as the customer picks up and scans each of the different items. From our grocer's perspective, this has also led to us being able to increase basket sizes double digits, driving 5% new customers that they've never seen at their stores who are now shopping there as they attribute it exclusively to Fetch Rewards now being available there. And we've also been able to see that their increase in purchase rate um, is continuing to trend upwards. So if the customer had been shopping there three times a month, now they're shopping there four times a month and spending more. So our grocers, it is a no-brainer when they look at the ROI calculations. And that's why if you go to any one of our grocery stores, they'll actually tell us, they'll be the first ones to pick up the phone and call another retailer and say, you need to get on board with this. So our retail sales side is something that we've just started to focus on and is really starting to pick up for us and we're really excited about that. Another thing that we're able to do that our retailers and our brands love is we have the ability to reach out and, as I mentioned, touch that customer in the store at that point of decision. So one of our biggest uh, clients, Kraft Heinz, they actually have an employee in our office two days a week just working with us on this. And it's able to, someone just scanned a thing of bagels. Well, they get a coupon that pops up right then and there for cream cheese. And you're actually targeting that customer when you know that they're holding something and their mindset is going to be open to actually receiving something like that. So it's been a really powerful tool. Grocers use it all the time to be able to increase their basket sizes. There's all kinds of produce that they have to throw away at the end of the day, even though it's still very good. They just don't want to risk it start to go bad. So they can start doing flash sales through this as well so that the customers on our end, if you're planning on eating a meal that night, you could get a filet mignon for half price. And it's just because even though it's gonna still be good, it's just they would normally pull it three days in advance of its expiration date. So for our customers, we can drive them great real-time deals. For our stores, that's saving them huge amounts of waste, which for us is really important. One of the areas that we're working on moving towards as well is for our quality shoppers, so that in the future with the Fetch application, you're going to be able to go in there and input your different preferences. You might be gluten-free, so that if you scan any product with gluten in it, without you ever having to look at the box, it will let you know real time. 
one of the biggest problems for consumer packaged goods companies is the box is the box no matter who's holding it. That's really unfortunate because depending on who the person is holding it, there's different information that they care about that is on that box. What this allows the brands to do is target that information to the customer, make the grocery stores start to be more dynamic and adjust to that customer as a person. So as our customers go throughout the store, the store of the future is going to start changing itself depending on who you are. You might have just scanned lettuce, you get over to one of our way stations, it's playing a, a commercial for a new recipe that you might want to try. And it's going to know that that will include three of the items you already have in your cart. So the whole thing that we're trying to do is make it so the shopping experience is actually catered to you and that grocery stores are changing as you go through the shopping experience, not the other way around. One other thing that our retailers and brands love to do is they love to get the feedback from their customers real time in store. So they're able to deliver them messages and give free fetch points just for co collecting that insights. And we don't have panel data by any means. We have authentic grocery shoppers who are shopping using this program because they love it. And we'll have at any of our stores anywhere from eight all the way north of 25% of all their revenue going through the fetch application on any given week. So they're actually capturing large portions of grocery shoppers that they otherwise never have seen before and now they're able to reach out and communicate with that customer and again refine the message that they want to deliver to people like that in the future. Finally, when the customer is actually ready to check out, they have all their items scanned, ready to go. There is a black box that we have developed and put a patent around that actually allows us to integrate with any of the different point of sale systems that are in the industry. For anyone who knows grocery, that's a really tough challenge because there are hundreds of different types and versions of point of sale systems. And one of the biggest reasons why no one's been able to do this before is to do a single integration to one is in the, in the millions that it costs to do. So especially for the industry independent, small and medium sized retailers, which is our target market, they can never afford something like this. The Kroger's, the Walmart's, they're already doing things like this and rolling them out. So we're trying to give a chance to those smaller guys to be able to fight back, capture spend from the CPGs that they have otherwise never would have seen and be able to deliver a customer experience to their customers that would normally be held exclusively for the big box stores that have the budgets to bring on their own technical teams. So that gets me really excited because a lot of our clients, they are the mom and pop stores or even small chains and the amount that this means for them and their customers is huge it's so much more than just a ROI on a on a envelope or the back of a uh, Excel sheet this is something that really changes the groups that we, we go into and allow them to do things that they otherwise weren't able to do before these are just some of the usership stats. The great thing that I'm even more proud about is the fact that our users love the application. So not only are we seeing huge amounts of people using the application at any of our stores within the first couple of months, 50% of all customers who ever download and actually give the app a try will come back and use it every week, every month after that. That's huge for us. For any mobile application, we're really proud of that. And if you actually add on another 22% after that, those are our light users, people who are still coming back and using it every month. So our retention rate is actually actually north of 70% of people who are going to come back and become long-term users. Just 50% of that is actually heavy users, which we're really excited about. And then throughout the store, those points of decision, that's when products are actually being picked up and made a decision around. Um, we've actually even run tests just to see how they would work, where if someone picks up and scans Hellman's mayonnaise, Kraft will deliver them a coupon for Kraft mayonnaise. We actually found it's really effective. People are flip-floppers while they're in the aisle, uh, especially if it's something that they weren't brand loyal to. You can even get people to switch from Coke to Pepsi. Um, so it's really intriguing to see that you can do that. Um, and for the customers, they're just getting great deals. So they've always been happy about that as well. Uh, the retail benefits, we've been kind of talking about this throughout the um, throughout this, so I won't go too far into that. I'm going to actually switch over to one other presentation. So I have one other slide here that I wanted to show. So if you look at who are... Um, if you look at the growth of our company, so we started back in 2013. Uh, for the first year and a half, we were developing the program. Um, we're not just a mobile app company for better or for worse. We have an iOS app, an Android app. We have a Windows tablet application. We have custom hardware we developed. We have back-end dashboards. We have full databases. The technology stack and um, you know amount that goes into this whole platform is staggering. So it took us a year and a half of people internally developing it to be able to even release the first pilot. After 
After that, we launched in double digit stores to be able to just start collecting six months worth of data so we can share the data with our future retailers and make sure that for us ourselves that we knew we were delivering something that customers liked and that our re future retail partners would like. And after that, only in the past couple of months, we've shifted over to having a more of a sales focus uh, with our first sales guy actually joining a little over three months ago. Obviously the first month getting up to speed since he had never seen grocery before. But since then we've been able to quadruple the number of stores that we've ever had signed. Um, so you'll have Metcalf's coming online, you'll have Miller and Sons coming online, Piggly Wiggly Wanakee, Fresh Madison Market, Cap Center, all those stores will be coming online within the next couple of months because they're already signed. So we're really excited to continue to expand out from there. Um, we have two stores live in Puerto Rico now. We have a store in Massachusetts, California, um, Pennsylvania, New Jersey. Um, so we're really excited to see as this continues to grow how our footprint will continue to grow. Some of our big partners that we work with right now, we actually have some really strategic partnerships with the three largest POS resellers in the US. What that enables us to do is in all states except for Alaska and Michigan for some reason, we have teams that can actually launch the Fetch program and get it up and running on our behalf. They're trained on the program, they know how to launch it, and they can also sell it for us. We haven't turned on any of these yet, but we're going to in 2016 to really start hitting our numbers to be able to get to 1,000 stores by the end of next year. So we're excited for that trajectory. And then just some of our current partners right now, the brands have been so much fun to work with because they've never seen a program like this. They absolutely love, they typically do send a person to our office. We love having our clients in the office working with us. Um, I think they do too, they all enjoy our dogs. Um, and it's been really fun to have them all there, um, continuing to innovate, work together, and just find new things that we can do. And then we've also been winning some industry competitions recently that we're really excited about, like the Mondelez future shopper uh, we won the insights innovation comp competition and those are competing against companies directly in our space that have much more funding than we do or long track records but we're excited to be the ones coming into the market displacing them on that side and to final or to finish it all up we have a team of 36 right now majority of us all based in Madison um, we have uh, it's kind of a split right now with 10 of them being on the development side and then the rest being on either sales operations all those different fronts um, but the team is continuing to grow so the two asks that I have for anyone in the community is we're always looking for new talent who is interested in joining on with the team and the second piece is we're always looking for grocery connections um, so that's always something that we're trying to get in front of more of them, get more people on board, and bring, be able to bring this to as many customers as possible. So that's Fetch. <laughs> Thank you for the presentation. Now is the time if you want to ask a question um, about anything. So please raise your hand if you'd like to ask a question. So sorry if I missed it. Um, are you guys from UW Madison, or why based in Madison? Of course, Madison's awesome, but um, so it actually goes back well before the company was even started. So I grew up in Massachusetts. I came out to go to school here at UW, and um, when we came up with the idea, it made sense for us to just start it here. We always had milestones set in place. By the end of our, you know, by the end of my sophomore year, we said we need to go into to business plan competitions. We need to win X. If we win X, we'll stay here. We ended up beating that number, so we stayed here for that summer. And then we said, okay, well, we need to go to the Angel community. If we can raise you know, a quarter million this summer, then we'll stay here, able to do that. So every time we've had these milestones set for us, and it, could, it doesn't even always be financial. It could be if we can find the top talent technical team that we need here, then we'll stay here. So we've constantly been challenging ourselves on should we be looking to relocate, but so far we've been able to find what we need here. Um, to be honest, it's, all, it's always available. If you have the right idea, the right people behind it, you'll be able to find a lot of those resources. It's just, do you have the persistence to go out there and get them? Things that, we're not naive to think things will be so much better on the East or West Coast because there's just more competition out there. Um, and a lot of our retailers and brands really like the fact that we're based in the Midwest because a lot of them are based in the Midwest as well. Yeah. And they're not getting hit left and right with Silicon Valley companies coming out and saying, oh, we have the newest, best idea for an app. And then they go out of business two weeks later. <laughs> so so we, we do have that going for us as well. Cool. Thank you. Uh, that's so cool. That's I just had never even heard of that before. So thank you. Um, so what was the impulse? So you talked about the grocery business not being disrupted for you know hundreds of years. And so what made you think of that and uh, why this particular 
process? I'm just really passionate about grocery. But why? No, no, I'm not at all. I, I'm not. Um, so I actually went from my freshman year into my sophomore year, and I moved out of dorms into an apartment. So for the first time ever, I was grocery shopping. Um, and it was as simple as that. I was trying to go to as many different grocery stores as I could, mostly because I was just really inconsistent, I guess. I just wanted to see what type of store I wanted to go to. So I'd go to Walmart, Metcalf's, Trader Joe's, all the different stores. And no matter what store it was, they saw all had the same fundamental pain points, in my opinion, at least. Um, and I started talking with a lot of people about that. And once you brought it up to them, it was things that they had just gotten used to. They just assumed why it's ridiculous that you don't know what your running total is. No matter where you're shopping online, you know what your running total is and you can control that. So when you ask people who are walking around the grocery store with their phone out using a calculator, you're saying, why are you okay with that? Why is this something that you're willing to do? And I think a lot of people have become numb to it. Um, so we just challenged on that side and continued to, the idea when it first started looked 100% different than where it is now, but we learned through just talking with customers, talking with retailers, um, taking our own inputs and shopping a lot. Um, so that's kind of where it came from. And for us, we just really like solving challenging problems. And this was a really challenging one in an industry that would be tough as well. So we figured, well, let's give it a shot. <laughs> So, so has your initial data shown a meaningful difference in the time it takes to complete a shopping experience between traditional pull it off the shelves and scan it versus scan each item and so to be honest, there's really no difference in terms of our checkout slightly faster, but you spend a little bit more time in store scanning products. One of the things we're working to roll out is now that we've watched our customers and we're able to have the data on them, let's say you've used the app 10 times, you've spent $1,000 um, and we have a security check that happens at the checkout. You've never had a missed item either, which means you've never, you've never slipped anything in there. You've never missed a scan. Well, you might become a platinum user, which means Nothing changes for how the cashier interacts with you, except there's no security scan anymore. You go right out of there, they just randomly audit every couple of times. So our better customers, as they learn and get better at using it, and they're the store's best customers, will be able to get through faster. They're gonna have all kinds of benefits that they otherwise wouldn't have had. So the system's going to start, again, as I said, we want it to cater to the individual. So it will start learning about the customer, getting better, and making it faster and faster for the customer. What, what is the devil's advocate uh, pushback that you get from stores as you're trying to enter more? Um, I don't want this. The biggest one that we always hear is my demographic is too old. They won't use it. And initially, I would have agreed with them because our first store that we launched was Fresh Madison Market. Our average age of customer was 23, 22. Um, and from what we knew, that would be the only people who would work with us. However, as we started to get some people who were willing to let us go and launch at their stores, we found that our user penetration exactly mapped, almost exactly mapped over to that store's uh, user base. So if they had 10% of customers who are 65 plus, 10% of Fetch customers were 65 plus. We have rental tablets that they can use uh, on Senior Citizen Day at Piggly Wiggly in Mayville, which has been live for now a year. If you don't call ahead, you won't get one of their six tablets. It's unbelievable. Um, so we never expected that. So now we have the data to show and be able to fight against that point. Um, another big one is we charge 1% of all revenue that goes through Fetch is our subscription fee. And essentially we also charge 1% percent of all revenue that goes through Fetch as the referral po or the bonus points that go back to the customer. So to go into a grocery store and say, we're basically charging 2%, they say, we're a 2% industry. You're asking me to get rid of all my margins. Well, we say, you know, you're, you're a smart businessman. You're not going to lo lower your net margins at the end of the day. What you're going to do is you're going to take them out of this three lines. And we show them exactly where it comes from, where the benefit comes from. But initially, and especially while we were naive to the industry, we would get, hound we would get hit with those type of questions all the time. And we couldn't answer them because we just didn't know enough about their business. Now that we know enough about their business, once you walk them through the line items and show them exactly where it's coming from, why it's going to save them money in areas, uh, where they're going, where we can guarantee they're going to get double their return on it, um, it becomes a much easier con um, conversation. But one of the other big components with a store like Metro, they want to brand it themselves. They don't want it to be branded as Fetch, um, mostly because they say we've built up our own brand. Well, we said yes, you've built up your own brand in grocery, not in technology. Um, so it, that's going to be a constant battle for us with bigger chains. Um, so right now, I'd say that's the biggest one that we just haven't figured out how to quite solve. Are there other revenue sources 
other than the 1%? The majority of our revenue actually comes from our brand partners. So that we're basically, we basically make money off of all coupons that run through the system, which is awesome. We get paid to save people money. Um, we make money from uh, different research that they're doing through targeting customers with surveys, things of that nature. And for us, the big win is the data behind this. Um, the data in the grocery industry is a multi-billion dollar industry already as it is. No one has the granularity down to a timestamp on every item that's being scanned and across all the different locations. Um, not only we know Wes is the same customer here at Fresh Madison Market as I am at Metcalf's, before we were always two different Wes's. Um, so they're actually finally being able to pull it all together. And that's why they're interested in us right now. Not because we can move a lot of product at our limited stores. Good question. Um, I'm one of those people that hate to go to the grocery store. Yep. So is there a way that you can get uh, the grocery store's inventory and you can pick what you want and then p potentially just drive up there and they can put it in your car and you can go? So that's exactly what, there's companies that are out there tackling that space. And to be honest, you're just right now not in our target market that we're going after. However, we will look to in introduce a partnership down the road with a company like that who will be able to fulfill those services. We, ha we aren't going to be the ones who are doing it, but we will actually partner with a company like that. Those companies are already very interested in what we're doing. Um, so we know that it will work out at one time. All right, we have time for one more question. Uh, you mentioned Metcast. Um, I'm assuming I have to have a connection to the internet at all time when I'm walking through the store. I know at Metcast I get zero bars in many places there. Yep. Uh, have you had problems with people going, hey, I can't scan now because it doesn't work, it's spotty, et cetera? Yeah, so the reason why it hasn't launched yet is we're waiting for their Wi-Fi to be installed. So I would have to lock, lock onto on their, their Wi-Fi. Wi and it will be free, no password. It will just be able to connect you right away. We see that about 55% of all of our customers use cellular data when they're going through the store and 45% use Wi-Fi. We do require all the stores have free, open public Wi-Fi for customers to use for fetch. So if I want to continue hacking, I should go to Metcast. <laughs> There you go. <laughs> there you go. Connect to theirs. All right. Well, thank awesome. you, everybody, for coming. And thank you to Wes for coming and presenting and telling us about Fetch Rewards. Um, we have a little bit of time left, so if you have more questions, please come up and you can talk to, to Wes in person. Um, there's more cake and there's more coffee, so please help yourself. And thank you so much for coming. Hope to see you next week. I will also have Emily here as well if uh, you want to ask her any questions about the event tonight or the project that she's working on. Exactly, and please talk to Emily if you have questions about uh, We Are All Criminals. Thank you. Thank you.